Hello again, physics friends. Last time we were together, we derived the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object in polar coordinates. And we looked at time derivatives of those unit vectors, r hat and phi hat, and we ended up with this quite complex acceleration vector. Um, the goal of this video is to break down each of the terms in the acceleration to get some intuition for what each one does and and um, the physical meaning of each one. Um, so I thought we'd start with a special case and the simplest case, and that is um, this idea of uniform circular motion. And basically, you know, in this, on the right-hand side here, we have four terms, one, two, three, and four, and we're get, gonna basically turn off some terms and keep other terms. Um, like for example, if we force the radius of the trajectory to be fixed, that means r is constant, r dot will be zero and r double dot will be zero. So we can kind of at will get rid of terms that we don't want and then it'll help us interpret the remaining terms, okay? So let's start with the uniform circular motion. Okay, so we're gonna start with a special case of uniform circular motion. Mathematically what that means is uh, we'll have an object moving in a circle, meaning the radius is constant the distance of the object from the origin is constant, and also uniform means constant speed, which also can be phrased as constant angular speed. So phi dot is the rate of change of angle, and that's going to be a constant. Sometimes we call phi dot omega for angular speed. Okay, so let's see what this would look like visually. Okay, so we can show, uh, imagine this is a car driving in a circle, and we're looking down on the ground from above, we have a center of a circle, and the green ball here is our car moving around the circle. So at any instant of time, the car will have a velocity vector. That velocity vector will be tangent to the trajectory. And what do we expect? Um, well, we know from our previous work on uniform circular motion, we expect that the acceleration be radial. that there be no phi hat component to the acceleration. And then we call that the centripetal acceleration. Okay. And also we know something about the magnitude of this acceleration vector. We know that it's V squared over R um, which is also expressed as r times omega squared. Okay, That's the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so let's actually work through um, this using our expression for the acceleration, subject to the constraints that r is constant and phi dot is a constant. Okay, so the meaning of r equals a constant is straightforward. It, it means that r dot is zero. And also our second derivative is zero. So we have a constant distance from the origin. That's not changing. The consequence of phi dot is constant is that the second derivative of phi is zero. So there's no angular acceleration. Okay, so let's see this play out then. We have the acceleration has two terms for the radial component in general, and two terms for the tangential component in general. But we get to get rid of a lot of these terms, right? Because the fact that r double dot is zero tells me this term goes away. The fact that r dot is zero tells me that term goes away. And then the fact that phi double dot is zero tells me this term goes away. So in this case, we are left with only one of the four terms. We find that the acceleration is purely radial. 
and that it points radially inwards because there's this minus sign. Okay, and just so we're uh, just to be really explicit about this, I've drawn the velocity and acceleration vector, but there's also a position vector that has an associated unit vector r hat. Okay. So what we're seeing is that the acceleration vector points in the minus r hat direction, which means the acceleration points radially inward. Very good. And what is this phi dot squared? Well, we decided to call phi dot omega. And what is little r? Well, little r is the radius of this circle. Okay, so this circle has a radius capital R. So we can actually write the acceleration as minus capital R omega squared in the r-hat direction. And indeed, that meets our expectations that we wrote up here in blue, that the acceleration has a magnitude of r omega squared, check, and that the acceleration be radial um, and radially inward. No, sin no um, tangential component, no phi hat component. Okay, great. Next, let's look at non-uniform circular motion, in particular, um, a circular motion, but where the speed can change. All right, so in non-uniform circular motion, we still have the constraint that the distance to the origin is constant. So the time derivative of r and its second time derivative are zero, but we are not saying that the second time derivative of the angle phi is zero. That can be non-zero. Okay, so let's see what we get. So I've copied down my expression for the acceleration and polar coordinates, and now I'm gonna look at terms that go away. So r and r double r dot and r double dot are zero, so we lose the first and last of the four terms. But neither of the other two terms are zero. So we're going to be left with minus r omega squared in the r hat direction as before, plus capital R um, alpha, where here I've defined alpha as the second derivative <clears throat> of phi. Okay, so my acceleration now has a radial component, and it also has a tangential component. So what might that look like? Okay, so let's say we're over on the circle. We have a velocity vector. We have an r hat unit vector. And we have a phi hat unit vector. Okay. Now our acceleration has multiple components. One component is radial towards the center of the circle, but another component is tangential. And depending on the relative size of those quantities, you're going to get an acceleration that does not point in the tangential direction, nor does it point in the radial direction but it points in the combination of the two. So the length of this side would be r omega squared, and the length of this side would be r times phi double dot. Okay. And we can think of the radial component as coming just from the fact that the object's moving in a circle, right? We had that before, even for a uniform circular motion. So then the tangential piece is coming because, uh, arises because the object's speed is changing. And when the speed is changing, that produces a tangential acceleration. So we'll consider one more case, um, and that is just purely radial motion. So, you know, imagine we have an origin and we have a car just driving away from the origin. And we take a snapshot of it, and right now the car is sitting here at a position vector r away from the origin, and it's driving with a velocity v that's parallel to r. Okay, In that case, um, the constraint here is that phi is a constant. 
right? Because if you think about a coordinate system, an xy coordinate system, a Cartesian coordinate system, the angle phi is the angle between the x-axis and the position vector. And if you're driving purely radially, you don't change your angle phi. So with phi being constant, that tells us that phi dot and phi double dot are zero. So our acceleration vector, which in general has these four terms, is, is going to end up with only one. So in particular, phi dot is 0, phi double dot is 0, phi dot is 0. So all that we have is r double dot in the r hat direction. So this is just 1D motion. Um, we could have just reoriented our x-axis to point in that direction, right? And this would just be motion in a Cartesian system. <clears throat> so for example, we could have done the following. We could have had um, our origin here, our position vector like that, our velocity vector like this, and we could have just tipped our coordinate system. So we had an xy coordinate system, and we just rotated our xy coordinate system, in which case we could have done Cartesian coordinates from the get-go, and we would say the position vector is equal to x, x in the x-hat direction plus nothing in the y-hat direction and nothing in the z-hat direction. <clears throat> so what would the second derivative of the position vector be? That would be the acceleration. Well, that would just be x double dot in the x-hat direction. <clears throat> in this case, x double dot is the rate of the uh, acceleration of the distance from the origin second derivative of the distance from the origin. The form here looks the same as it did when we used the polar coordinates, and for good reason. Both questions are one-dimensional motion. Okay. So by now we've introduced polar coordinates. We have um, derived the expression for position, velocity, and acceleration. And then in this video, we tried to give some intuition, some understanding for um, each of the subterms. Um, <clears throat> in the acceleration. The one term we didn't really cover is the term that involves r dot and phi dot, and it turns out that's a so-called Coriolis term um, that we'll potentially get to in the future, but not we don't need that piece at this moment. Okay, so until next time, take care and be well.